What is going on everyone, Knights here, and welcome back to another Mordhau guide video. Today I'm hoping to put out my final opinions and hopefully help you guys make a pivotal decision when determining whether you'd like to stick with the 240 control scheme or you'd like to try out the fully keybinded or at least partially keybinded control setting. So there's a few main differences. I would say there's at least three to four main advantages that you get for switching over to keybinds and one or two advantages that you'd get from 240. I'm going to hopefully lay that down for you guys right now and know that I will be breaking down all of my physical settings that I use personally along with the broader settings that would determine whether you're a keybind or 240 player. And at the end of the video, I will be doing some optimization that will up your FPS for the game and I will timestamp it all down below to hopefully help make things easier for you guys to navigate. So one of the main benefits to keybinds comparatively to 240 is the minimal requirement of your camera and perspective motion. So when you're on the 240 scheme, in order to initiate an attack from left, right, upper and lower sides, it requires some sort of camera movement. Not only does this telegraph and give away which direction you're going to be attacking from if the opponent knows what you're doing, but this also makes your physical input and pattern recognition going into that attack more difficult and it overworks your mouse hand. And when you're trying to read an opponent's attack, if you're trying to slip into the initiative, it's gonna be a lot harder to know if you truly have the initiative if your camera is going like this. And that's why if you watch some of the higher skilled players play Mordhau, when they're on the defensive in 1vx or even in duels, a lot of the times you'll see them hold their perspective as stable as they can, and that's because they've locked onto their opponent's weapon and their opponent's animation, and they are 100% focused on that and nothing else but that. So what I'm saying is if you have to allocate some sort of investment over here on your own attacks that require some sort of motion blur and defocus on your camera end, it's going to make you have a much more difficult time reading your opponent's attack. It's going to make your drags and excels much more readable. And on top of it all, it makes your drags and excels much less extreme. So what do I mean by this? In order to do a right-sided attack on 240, it would look something like this. There needs to be some sort of fidget motion to the right in order to pull it back in if you're trying to do an excel. So excels are essentially garbage on 240 uh, because you need to pull away and then back in and it's just not nearly as fast. As for drags, they're perhaps a little bit better than excels because you don't need to pull them back in. So drags and excels are much more extreme when using binds. You have to move your camera angle less, which makes you have a much more focused image and makes things much more readable for you. And finally, and this ties in with not having to move your camera, but with binds, you can do left and right sided attacks, upper and lower, without moving your camera whatsoever. So you can allocate all of your mouse movement into your swing manipulation not into determining an attack side, all of that mouse movement is directly tied to your attack timing, your attack manipulation, and your attack angles. So essentially in that aspect, binds are just better. The only thing that's marginally better about 240 is chambering. But once you get comfortable with your binds, I assure you guys, chambering is not the hardest thing when you're trying to get good at this game. Uh, there's a lot more to it than that. For example, if you're on 240, this little cog, this little dial here, is going to determine which side your attack comes from, given that you're on the default control scheme. So if you're really bad at overheads and underhands, I would understand why somebody wants to keep it on 240, and you know, if they're trying to defend against a left overhead incoming, they just go like this, right, and just swing. Uh, yeah, that's a bit easier, but again, for more advanced players, that is not our number one issue. This game is so deep, and by focusing on chambering so much when in regards to binds versus 240, you're really handicapping yourself in the long run. One thing to take note of, and I will mention this later, is you want to keep your stab on 240 simply because of the upper and lower 
stab animations that you do not have otherwise. So for example, if you keep your stab binds on left and right stab and not on just the generic stab bind, uh, your stabs are going to look like this. They're going to be central like this. Whereas if you're on 240 stab, you have the ability to do upper and lower stab animations. Now, I'm going to make the argument, and I think a lot of higher skill players would back me on this, that you want to keep your stab on 240, and you want to turn all of your other attacks into a specific fully binded setup. So, thank you guys for watching. Stick with it if you want to see my actual keybinds that I use personally, as well as what it requires in the settings tab in order to switch over to a fully keybinded or a hybrid keybinded loadout. I will finally show you guys some ways to improve FPS, improve performance, reduce stuttering. And remember, I will be timestamping everything, guys. So thank you so much for hanging out. I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. So firstly, if you want to switch over to Keybinds and get off 240, which I think most of you should, there's some good 240 players out there, but I personally am under the belief that Keybinds are just the superior method. And there's quite a bit of evidence to back that. So firstly, jump over to the Controls tab and you want to uncheck everything here. As for your sensitivity and stuff, that's all personal preference. I play 800 DPI at 1.05 or 1.0, just to keep it simple. I kind of toggle between the two. And the main way to disable 240 is you're gonna to want to change it off of 240 here, set it up to custom, and then angle attack after press. I believe this is just a native setting to 240, so don't worry about that. I used to think it did something for binds. Uh, I think it's only related to 240, but here's the big one right here. Mouse X axis flips attack side. Uh, there is a key bind that is in direct replacement of this bind that is controlled by a single button as opposed to the entirety of your mouse movement. Once you've done that, you are now a key bind player uh, with a few other little tweaks actually. You're on your way to being a key bind player. So as for strike, you want to disable this and I'll explain that in a second. But we'll go ahead and try to locate Flip's attack side. I believe it's right here. So yeah, I set this up to my left alt. Do it to a top contending bind, but don't put it like front and center. Make it somewhere that you can access easily and quickly, but don't like rebind your like main attacks in order to fit this in. But it is pretty important to have access to this bind. Going back up to the strike and stab, these are two kind of big ones that finalize your control scheme. As I said earlier, disable strike uh, because this will actually kind of prevent you from having full left and right side attack control. Uh, I don't know if it's technically a 240 scheme if you don't disable this bind, but it definitely will throw you off. So disable strike. And as for stab, it's actually the opposite. You want to keep your stab on 240. So it's six different types of stabs versus two different types of stabs. So I highly recommend keeping this on mouse wheel up or whatever stab key might you use. I like mouse wheel. Uh, I think mouse wheel is pretty important for Mordhau. It's all subjective, but I think it's a really good bind in order to be able to morph. Uh, and again, morphing is used quite often at the high level. Um, you know, these are not that important key binds. These are all subjective. Organize your binds in chronological order of prime real estate and absolute need for those essential key binds. Whatever you're going to be accessing the most, put them in the most efficient locations. Uh, kick, this says equal sign. Uh, just to clarify, this is adjusted in my mouse software. But what this is, is my front DPI button. So basically the closest DPI button to my scroll wheel. Now make sure you disable the DPI shift in your software or else you'll be shifting your sensitivity in game. And that is like the last thing you want. So now we go to right strike. This is where the key binds begin. So this is left mouse button. So instead of your plain proper strike saying left mouse button, you disable that and bind it to your right strike. And this alt button by holding this while striking is going to determine that this is a left sided attack instead of a right sided attack. As for the upper strike, this is press in middle mouse button. So this is for the right side and the left upper strike down here. This is mouse wheel down. So for for both upper overhead strikes, I have it set to the mouse wheel 
wherever you can fit it into your mouse if possible i do think mouse is like the most convenient place to to lay a bunch of binds into if you're good at using your keyboard hand that's fine but i think keeping most of your sword mechanics in your mouse is going to really help you out so don't let these brackets fool you uh these lower strikes are tilt my mouse wheel left and right and this allows me to basically tilt right and scroll forward would be a underhand morph to a stab and same with the left side by having everything natively bound to the scroll wheel i have like five different attacks and like 20 different morph routes i can go down just within the scroll wheel and i have a good scroll wheel um it's mechanical and it doesn't f up too much and i'm really happy with it so it takes some practice even if you have a good scroll wheel and good settings with it you gotta just like be careful not to over scroll sometimes or you're gonna start comboing out of control or just mess up your morphs so it definitely takes practice as well left strike i have it on my thumb button too so that's my front thumb button i kind of skipped over faint and parry faints i have on my back thumb button now faint is pretty important i'd say it's like a top five bind in the way of importance and accessibility uh if you don't have a mouse with like any buttons other than left and right i would consider using faint or parry but if you have like a gaming mouse and it has more than just two or three buttons try your best to just fit in a proper feint instead of this feint or parry bind because it'll help you in the long run i'm not gonna get too deep on that or else the video would go on too long so yeah my crouch is set up to q that is the default feint so i prefer q being my crouch i really like it there but again it's all personal uh, but i'm going to jump back down here to the attacks um so again left and right stabs are disabled because remember we talked about the stab up here being set up to the scroll wheel and on the 240 scheme looking here we have the flip attack side make sure that's on something accessible so remember if you hold this it will flip all of your right sided attacks to become left sided attacks now as you can see i have left and right for just about everything and i can just use this left alt whenever i want but i'd say about 90 percent of the time i don't use it because i have left and right on everything but this is absolutely essential for those of you that have like a default like dell mouse or something like you guys need this on if you have good buttons and solid binds all throughout try your best to get everything on left and right and make sure it's symmetrical because if things aren't symmetrical it's going to really throw you off or at least not located in a logical place for you to go back to and remember that this pattern recognition equals this type of morph attack um again this is all personal to your layout but this is just how i have it now these are all just like voice and, and emote commands uh one last thing i will say i prefer having my equipment to fcx these are just a little closer and more accessible to me again these are not that essential um to like life and death scenarios but just something that you might consider if you have a hard time on keyboard and mouse accessing one two three four five consider fcxc um helped me out transitioning from console to pc a while back so we're gonna go ahead and dive into some graphics settings and some game settings but i hope you guys enjoyed the 240 versus keybinds comparison there and just sort of the breakdown of my keybinds and how to get over to the keybind scheme but yeah as for the game highly recommend turning ragdoll limit down and ragdoll stay time down this is all whether there's going to be a pile of dead bodies on the ground or not if if you enjoy seeing that sort of stuff just keep it like below 10 anything over that's just completely overkill and you're just like running a simulator game that just is going to tear up your hardware third person death camera i check this off because if you get decapitated in first person your head goes rolling down a hill uh you know it doesn't give me motion sickness but it's not very pleasant to look at so definitely check this off if you're in agreement with that i turn off my box just because i'm recording this is all personal preference stuff jumping over to the video i play on 1080 that's what probably 80 percent of people are playing on I prefer full screen, keep the resolution scale at 1.0 unless you're trying to do some like GPU scaling of your monitor, uh, but most people aren't trying to do that. V-Sync, I turned this on because I was having some tearing 
I wasn't having any FPS problems, but the uh, tearing was bothering me because I do record. I turned it on and it might have lowered my FPS by a few, but it makes the recordings a little clearer. Uh, field of view, one, 101. Like, there's no reason not to have it maxed out uh, unless you're playing third person, which I don't even think this affects them. It might, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't play third person. Um, but yeah, you need to have peripheral view in this game. It's extremely important because you catch attacks coming out of the corner of your eye all the time and if you're like way zoomed in like if you're down here in 30 like yeah no no one that's good at the game like uses 30 as their field of view or even anything really uh you know much under default like keep it at default or turn it up to 101 i think 101 is definitely better uh keep gamma at 1.0 anti-aliasing you can turn this off since i'm recording i have it on this is my recommendations for people that are running hardware from anywhere ranging from a RX like 560 all the way up to like a 1080 Ti or like even what I have now 5700 XT just kind of like the entry level 1080p gaming graphics cards all the way up to the overkill graphics cards regardless I mean if you're using like a 570 or a 1060 definitely like try to play like low medium across the board or else you're not gonna have a smooth experience if you are playing on like a 1080 or 2080 or 1070 ti definitely consider putting the settings at medium high ultra like hybrid if you have one of those overkill cards but for the general public i would recommend a mixture of low medium high ultra across the board why put heavier gpu cpu load onto things that you don't even notice in game whatsoever there's really no point so Anti-aliasing is something that will cost you some strain on your hardware. You can turn to FXAA. I haven't had any problems with FXAA, but it definitely like doesn't seem as nice as Temporal AA. Or you can just turn it off. Uh, texture quality for me, Ultra. If you're playing on like a toaster, then turn it to medium or low even. Uh, effects quality. This is less important than the texture quality. Uh, this is like explosion, like catapult explosion and things like that. Uh, these are like very instantaneous situational effects maybe including like fire pits and stuff like that uh, i turn it to high for my recordings if you're not worried about that type of stuff like turn all these things to like medium medium high medium low uh shadow quality is high just because there's no medium setting and the low setting is all pixelated and looks like trash uh indirect shadows off view distance medium this is just like distance rendering on foliage mainly so meaning if there's a bush it's not going to fully render until you're like 20 feet away if you have it on like medium low but if you're, uh, you know, what's the point in having like ultra view so that you can see a bush from like half mile away? It doesn't, you know, it doesn't matter to me. And though I don't believe this affects your view distance against other characters, meaning like if you're in an archer battle from max distance, you can still see them perfectly fine. And I think this is a separate, this has to do with more texture view distance. Uh, post processing quality, I'd keep that on like medium high. It's regarding like ambient occlusion stuff, which I like have off. Foliage density is high just for recording's sake. The lower you set it, it's probably better for like if you're like a sweaty comp boy because you can actually see through bushes. Like bushes like don't even really exist on low. Uh, whereas on ultra, like every bush is like totally solid and overgrown. Character quality, I think it's important to have it on high, at least for recording's sake. If you're playing, prefer I wouldn't go to low here, but if you're like have a really bad computer, yeah, you consider low medium. No cloth, regardless of what system you're running unless you're doing a cinematic recording or something again if you're gonna do like a demo rec cinematic definitely turn everything to ultra like max it out unless it's like stuttering for you in there ragdoll quality medium i haven't noticed a difference really have it on high if you care about that sort of thing go for it it's still plenty of ragdoll for me green space reflections low bloom is set to low i mean you could turn it off but you know it makes your game look halfway decent for recording uh, same with the ambient inclusion lens flares uh, but again, I, I try to play for performance and for quality, and it's tough to be somebody that's producing content to try to up their quality as much as they can while playing at a, you know, high frequency. And make sure your frame rate is set up with a little bit of headroom underneath your monitor. So if you have a 144 hertz monitor, put it at like 140 to 143 if you have a 240 hertz monitor you know put it just under that cap or at the cap but you don't want it to spike and it can cause stuttering in your monitor yeah definitely consider that and again if you have a 60 hertz monitor i guess you can turn it all the way down to 60 but 
you should probably get 144 hertz monitor if you're playing on PC and more that was one of those games when the milliseconds really do come into play and they really do count for something. So thank you guys so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Sorry if that was a bit confusing. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me down below and I will happily clarify anything and everything you want to know. Thank you guys so much again for dropping by and I will catch you very soon.